Now, you know your landing was hard when it ends up breaking your airplane. This is exactly what happened yesterday on a WestJet 737. Here we are approaching in top quality. That really is quite hard, you know. The immediate passenger feedback is quite audible. Yes, you may have heard of the WestJet 737 that indeed had quite a hard landing after its flight from Toronto, quite long for a 737 four hours, to the island of St. Martin, a place that we've been at before. And while this may not be the longest runway in the world, it's not a necessarily unsafe airport though. And to be honest, the overall landing wasn't even that hard. Here's a view from an airport live stream from yesterday. 150 people witnessed this on a live stream. Can you imagine? that with this 737 touching down yeah relatively hard but not hard enough to be able to crash the landing gear which made me immediately think uh, you know landing gear especially on the 737 a plane that tends to land a bit harder actually should be able to hold up quite some g loads of crashing down. This was like maybe 1.5 G, whereas the 737 should easily be able to withstand 2.2 G. Now the flight data recorder will have to show how many Gs of touchdown that really was. Damn, that poor pilot. So this sure is interesting. I mean, before the landing, this is, by the way, the registration of the affected airplane. I don't think this thing will fly again. Obviously, the pilots didn't notice anything unusual. This is why they, you know, continued with the approach. Probably the green lights were down. This landing gear looks perfectly able to pull this off. The weather at the time seemed perfectly fine as well. 13 knots of wind at 120 degrees, meaning that we've got pretty much straight headwind. Relatively good conditions. Perfect. Let's maybe try to do a hard landing like this. Maybe 500 feet per minute, something like that. All right, coming in for good landing right here. Yeah. I mean, yeah, let's not flare a lot. Oh, okay. That's, uh... That's not, that's not gone well at all. Uh-oh. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we've got a little bit of spark coming out here. Yes, smoke from that engine nacelle hitting the ground. As you can see, our main right landing gear has collapsed. Just like in real life, it's kind of come forward a little bit, which is interesting as well. So that must have happened right on touchdown. And now we are, uh, yeah, we're cooked. This plane for like 16 hours was sitting on the ground looking like this. Obviously, foam was deployed. Interestingly, I think the engine hitting the ground here on the right side of, you know, put out the thrust reversers, which is interesting. But as you can see, no fire broke out. Everyone evacuated very safely. I don't really doubt the WestJet passengers' sincerity when they say we almost lost our lives, uh, but this is not at all like anything life-threatening. By the way, why would you call your website that? That's hilarious. Now, I always wonder about this. How did they, like, we never hear about them actually getting the plane off the runway. That sounds like a hard job. In the flight sim, we can just move it over. That's no problem. I wonder what they're going to do with this airplane now. How are they going to fix it? Especially because the wing, unlike here in the flight sim, is so substantially damaged with the landing gear strut basically crashing through it. Now, the thing about this incident that made me think was that it is relatively similar to this. This is Alaska Airlines flight AS-1288. Just in 2023, practically the same thing happened with the landing gear being bent the other direction, but also crashing through the wing, you know, the strut, crashing through the wing. Here is a totally different one in Mexico City. Here is another completely different one in India. Main landing gear collapse with pretty much the same thing in 2015. And this makes you think, well, maybe here in this case, for example, as well, it's not really a fault of the pilots maybe doing a bit of a hard landing, but actually a technical fault with the aircraft, a maintenance issue. I mean, let's wait for this to be examined, this case. But for example, with this 737-800, relatively same issue, had an issue where the left landing gear trunnion pin failed due to overload following fatigue growth. So basically what holds the whole landing gear strut in place, this thing broke off. The same diagnosis was also with the Alaska 737 I just mentioned. Same thing after having the turnion pin that is torn off metal fatigue according to this comment these pins that hold the basically the whole strut in place are never replayed when they wear down they are overhauled and recoded with cadmium titanium alloy maybe in the future they will have to you know start 
maintained the landing gear of the 737 more. Jesus Christ, that's can, that's not even on the aircraft anymore. This was in the UK, East Midlands Airport, on like a cargo 737. Very good picture. Also, main landing gear inner cylinder had fractures through its chrome plated section. Daily Mail, how to check whether you're flying on a Boeing plane ahead of your summer holiday. That's actually insane. Uh, why? What is wrong with a 737 landing gear? Stop failing! Stop failing, 737! What? Oh my god, this can't be real. You know what? The 737 now, just as it is, is probably now the world leader of landing gear failures. Before, it was the Bombardier Dash AQ400. That one had millions of main landing gear failures. Or even... <laughs> oh my goodness, that's not good. Mainly because the landing gear design, as you can tell, is, you know, quite brittle so this happened uh, quite quite a lot um but it seems no better on the 737 now let's imagine this we're in this situation where our i mean it's kind of still in it there the landing gear could we still like take off you know or at least evacuate the run um no come on let me only give right throttle here make sure our nose is uh, don't worry about the engine. Don't worry about the engine. We kind of want to just take off again. This is fine. This is good. Yeah, going full power. Yes. Look at that. Look at that. We can we can actually still drive. It works still. Don't worry about it. Yes. This is great. Okay, we can build up some serious speeds now. We can still fly. And you know, WestJet. Don't even bother replacing it. You can just keep flying like that. Come on. Yes. <laughs> Hilarious! Yeah, no worries at all. We can put the landing gear up. Probably it won't work very well anymore. It's just not even like prop. Uh, yeah, this is the interesting thing is that most of these landing gear accidents are not really full hull losses. They are actually able to repair the plane relatively well most of the time and keep flying their plane. So everybody, the Bowden 737. Uh, I believe this will be a very interesting investigation to figure out how hard was this landing exactly? And what other factors played a role in this? I mean, yeah, these kind of landing gear collapses are never really deadly. But obviously, this is quite annoying for, you know, for airports because they block the runway the entire day. By the way, the funniest thing is the ATC communication because this is tower. Vacate. They, they told them to vacate here via Echo, and they couldn't. Uh, we're stopping on the runway, we're stopping on the runway. <laughs> and we're stopping on the runway. Yeah, and this is what happened. And... Uh, so yes, everybody, keep your landing gear maintained, and otherwise it'll be very expensive, and I'll see you guys tomorrow as always. Good night. And a special thanks goes out to my members, my supporters, <laughs> Guns Killer, R27, James Duram, that dude, Anime Gods of Gaming, Derek, Insider Plane, Nishititsu Finer, Professional Jamal, Ryland Williams, and New the York. You've got beautiful names.